you can now see Mike Stolp online as uh, he's nice enough to join us and just never ages. I mean, you you look the exact same age as you did when you and I first met. We were bringing the exciting action of the Tennessee Thundercats to Knoxville listeners each and every week. Yeah, Dave, um, you need to have your eyes checked, is all, I guess all I would say is so uh, I, I definitely look I look a lot different than uh, than I did back in the day. So uh, but, you know, be beauty is uh, something that's never been described for me. So it, I, maybe I looked awful back then, too. Who knows? No, no, no. Uh, men age gracefully. I, I think you're good. Yeah. It's, it's the women that have to worry about that. By the way, my eyes are good. No, my, by the way, my eyes are good. No contacts, no glasses. Campbell Cunningham, Taylor Hahn, cctis.com. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Set me up for a reader. There we go. It's like there the old go. days. All right. Um, Mike, Tennessee's offensive line is fill in the blank. Um, Tennessee offensive line is um, soft. I guess, or I, I don't know if soft is the word to say. I, when I say soft, I, I, you know, their, their technique is poor. Poor technique is probably a better way to describe that. And the soft goes along with that um, just in the way that they use their body and their leverage. Um, just it, the technique's not good. Okay. What causes that? Is it? Is it youth and inexperience, like with the Lance Hurd situation? Is it coaching? I mean, so, so I, yeah, I think I think it's 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 all of the above, right? I I, I do think, um, you know, when you're an offensive lineman, you got to perfect your craft, right? Because what you have to do is every movement you make matters. Every little twitch, every little step, you step two or three inches the wrong way you can get beat. And so when you look at, and that's, you know, we were talking and I've mentioned it before, people are laughed at me like, I, I'm, I told them after Chad Nunez, like, man, these tackles just, they're not, they're setting themselves up for uh, problems. And it's with the way that they set, it's the way that they have their feet. You know, these guys, both of them are 6'6". Six, six. You got Hurd and Campbell, both of them 6'6", six, six, right? Massive human beings. And, and they don't use their body to their advantage. You know, they, they don't, they have long arms, you know, as an offensive tackle, you want those guys to have reach, to, to use your arms, put them on them, keep the defender away from you so that they can't get into your body and then get around you quickly for what they call a short corner, right? So that they get right to the quarterback quickly and the pocket collapses fast. So when I, when I watch, when I watch offensive line play, I, I specifically focus inside. It's, it's a little bit easier because you've got bodies in there and you have less area to cover. You've got, you know, kind of a guardrails, so to speak, between a center and a tackle or guard and a tackle or what have you. The, the offensive tackles are out on an island a little bit. If they set incorrectly or they don't have their feet right and they don't use their arms well, that messes things up, that, that collapse the pocket, that allows short corners and or allows them to get into you and then start pushing you back. And so it, it, is, it is a tough thing to perfect. This is why the offensive tackles, are specifically in the NFL left tackles, are paid so well because they have to be flawless every single time. And unfortunately, these guys aren't using their arms, they're not using their technique well, and I don't know if it's just not ringing true with them as far as repetitions or if the coaching's not getting through to them. But overall, when I, when I watch them and their footwork and their sets and the way that they, they're not using the power of their body, that's the part that I saw originally. Like, okay, that's going to be a problem. And then we started seeing it. And so you see teams and, and defenders, they start going with a, a, an even front or you're, you're occupying your guards and you're occupying your tackles. Your best player is Cooper Mays, your center, right? And so they're leaving him basically uncovered or maybe in the shade. So, you know, they're not going to say, okay, I'm going to use Cooper for one guy and then everybody else. So, you know, Cooper's kind of almost a free man, but he can't help outside. He has to help him to the guy next to him. And so your tackles are now on an island, and that's why we're, we're getting starting to see this pressure. We're starting to see these things happen. We see the pocket collapse. Um, and then there's some other things from an assignment standpoint, it's just 
kind of rules that you have as an offensive lineman that you need to follow that I've seen have just, you know, gone against the rules of what you should do. Okay, let me so, um, let me remind everyone they need to click that like and subscribe button and make sure you have your notifications on because we'll visit with Cooper Mays, the ball report with Cooper Mays brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. If he's playing at a high level, is, is there anyone else, Caleb, before you jump in here, anyone else that is playing at a more than competent level right now, perhaps at the guard position? Yeah, I think Javante Spragan is playing well. He put, he put, you know, the, it's different. Every position within the offensive line is different. Your mentality is different. Your personnel and the makeup is, you know, your guards can be pretty aggressive. They can have a little bit of a nastiness to them. So that because, because again, you, you're protected. You have a tackle over here and you've probably got somebody out here and you've got a guard in, or center inside. So you can go hit people, chip people. You can do things to help. Um, you know, you, you, your technique doesn't have to be, as flawless. Yes, you still have to have good te technique. You have to understand blocking schemes and things like that. I think Javante Spriggan's done well, but overall, you know, I think because of the way the tackles are just not being physical and using their technique and their bodies and their leverage to their advantage, it kind of downplays a lot of what happens inside. Mike, um, you know, you, the, a lot of this stuff you're seeing about tackles, I hear a lot of this in just – it's about it being reflective of today's era of college football, but what you're saying doesn't seem to apply to that. Does it like, I know a lot of offensive lines aren't used to putting their hands in the ground anymore and maintaining blocks. Is that what, is that somewhat reflective of what you're seeing with the tackles or even by that standard, are they still just bad? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question, Caleb. I mean, the offensive line has changed, you know, Tennessee's philosophy is a lot different than maybe a more pro style because, you know, you don't have to hold up as long. Uh, typically because you've got a lot of different routes, you're trying to spread the, the, the defenses out. But what the defenses have seen is like, okay, we can rush four, drop seven, and the windows aren't there. Like Nico couldn't find the windows or the one-on-one -on -one matchups aren't there. It's zone. So zone coverages take longer for plays to develop. If you got one-on-one, -on -one, you see it right away. On the offensive line or the way the tackles play, it still comes down to technique. You know, it, whether you're, um, you know, it's, it's all about leverage. It's all about positioning of your body. So even 50 years ago, if you, if you turn and, and put your feet too close together and somebody hits you, you're going to get knocked back. And so I see the technique aspect of it. That's just not solid footwork, arms, separation. Those are the kind of things that will be consistent with football for the, for, from, from here on out. And, I think that's the part where they're, they're just not adjusting to. They're not, they're not, um, you know, I don't know if they're, how they're being coached to do that, to adjust to that, but it does. I mean, we, we used to do it every single day, every single day when I was at Tennessee, you get on the line and you do a set and you should step over that line. Your feet should be in a certain position every single time. And you did it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you do it in your sleep. And so I think that's the thing is they just not perfected that. And I don't know if it's just it's not clicking for them or they just can't grasp it or, you know, are they too big? Are they too big so that they can't move nimbly to be able to do those things? So I think that's the challenge that I see with that offensive line, specifically at the tackles and how they set. Yeah, what you're saying would be understandable if we're talking about Hurd, who still could be – overthinking what he's doing and that at times I you I think you would agree causes hesitation mm -hmm. but uh, John Campbell Jr. on the other side that doesn't make a lot of sense to me he's been around the program a long time yeah I, I think again um you know it, what what are the coaches telling him I'm not in those rooms so you don't know um and there there are some guys that just they just don't get it right or they just they don't process it fast enough heard you know it, and it is it's it's a different speed and you're trying to process as fast as you can and it's hard to catch up and so you know if you're six six and, and 350 the question is okay if you're six six and 330 
20 pounds different, can you move quicker? Can you get your feet set quicker? And I think I see slow feet. You know, they, they used to dog me about my feet, you know, and everybody dogs everybody about their feet. But if you have slow feet, that gets you beat really quick. You got to have quick feet. You got to get set and you got to get in the right place. I just don't know for Campbell if, if that's the reason, if, that, if, that, if that's the transition, what have you. Granted, I know they've all been kind of banged up. But again, I go back to the first game of the season. They weren't. And that's when I saw the footwork that concerned me. Um, Mike, uh, I want to ask a little bit, you know, what are the things you're seeing? And you're right. Plays are a little bit slower to develop when there's four down and seven dropping back in zone. Um, do you think, would you suggest that maybe because of the issues at tackle, Heupel needs to stick to the run game even more than he's doing so right now? Because he really needs those guys to cheat up for those big plays to be there quickly enough, doesn't he? If tackles can't hold blocks long enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's all about, um, you know, the, the Tennessee system, it's, if there's five in the box, you run the ball. If there's six in the box, you throw the ball. And so what they're doing is they're disguising a little bit, number one. So they'll have two linebackers up, and they'll have four down linemen, and then they'll drop one or they'll spy one and drop so that they roll into a zone coverage. So that can throw you off. I do think if there is six in the box and they're trying to run the ball, there's not enough men to block the people. Um, I would like to see the run run game do a little bit better, but again, it all it all predicates on on you have you have your rules and your calls and okay four down linemen two linebackers that's six in the box I got to throw the ball, but then they're dropping to a zone coverage. The other thing about that is if that is the fact, you know, and and I and I saw it, you know, Nico's a little bit nervous, right, because he's feeling that pressure from the outside. If if your pocket's firm and you can scan the field and you know that you've got you know, you got space here to step in and throw the ball, but as that pocket collapse on you with your tackles, that's when they get antsy and you can't really see or feel where the next open scene may be. Uh, run games, I mean, you, you've got a stud running back and use him as much as you can. But I think, again, you look at how uh, Arkansas defended and they gave a recipe. And, and you saw how Kentucky defended Ole Miss. I think really Kentucky set the standard for kind of these spread offenses how they defended Ole Miss, Arkansas took a play from that, and they they kind of replicated it against Tennessee. And you're going to see everybody else do that against Tennessee. So these offensive linemen have to adjust. When the rules are there to run the ball, run the ball. Uh, if you bring in, you know, you start seeing in a tight end kind of in a flex wing position to block, now you have fewer guys out in patterns. So you still have – so it takes even longer for the pass plays to develop – but your receivers have got to get open too. So that, and that's that's another challenge I see that you know I would like to see them adjust to. Let's do this. I'm gonna say bank on it. The best um, remedy for the issues not tackle is that 12 personnel that we heard so much about with two tight ends. So uh, I'm gonna say bank on it, brought to you by commercial bank. It might give me 15 seconds and then you tell me if I'm right or wrong. Brought to you by commercial bank. I've been with Commercial Bank for over 20 years, and uh, Commercial Bank is fantastic because Commercial Bank um, is, uh, again, I've been with those guys for 20 years, absolutely love them, and Commercial Bank is member FDIC, Life Made Better. Commercial Bank creates positive experiences for every customer every day with better solutions, better technology. That is Commercial Bank. Commercial Bank is your neighborhood bank. What makes us different from other banks? We understand that every customer has unique opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. We don't expect you to fit into the same box as the next person or business. Whether it's purchasing a home, saving for your child's future, or planning for your next vacation, we're with you every step of the way to navigate life's big decisions. Commercial Bank, life made better. All right, so I say bank on it, but what say you? Because you know more about football than me, Mike. The two tight end look would immediately remedy the offensive tackle problems. Here's a challenge with the two, two tight end pro, uh, situation. Um, you and, and it's the right solution probably, but what you've got is you've got a team that's built or an offense that's built on spreading people out in space so that you create – gaps, you create angles, you create opportunities for the run game. What you will see is they'll control the ball more, but you won't see 
50 points a game. You'll see 24, 28 points a game, maybe. You're going to see fewer possessions. You're going to see fewer big plays. So if your defense can hold out that long, that's okay. But now you're bringing more people into the box, so your running is not quite as as good. Um, you know, Samson's a stud, and, and he runs hard. But, um, you know, I think you bring that in, that brings more people into the box because they'll adjust. And so you're not going to see the big, the big plays, the big scores, the big one-on-one matchups. And if you do, your receivers are going to have to get open. So it, it's probably – it's a sign of – they don't believe the offensive tackles can handle up one-on-one, so they need more help and more protection. But it's also a sign that we're going to try and maybe not score as much as we typically do. Our offensive production is going to be hampered from that. Great stuff, Mike. That's fantastic input. Uh, hopefully we can borrow your time again. We, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, go Tennessee Thundercats. <laughs> there you go. Love, love the Thundercats, man. Yeah, you, still got, you still got your T-shirt, Dave, that you wear around? Uh, I don't. And, no, uh, no. But I will tell you a funny story. Uh, George Lemon, who I uh, was Meadowlark Lemon's grandson, owned that. And um, I don't know about you, but I can get my last check. And at one point, he was featured because he had three sons on the same team in a small college school on ESPN Game Day. Did you see that? I did not see that one. Yes, this has been a decade ago. But since I knew who the school was, I just called and went through the directory and left him a message. You still owe me some money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, immediately before the feature was over, I was like, now I know where he is. Now we know. I'm going to go track him down. I need my $250. All right, <laughs> Mike, I hope you got all your money. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, he's, he's Mike Stoll. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.